into me. And well, the first game that I played actually in, this is from uh, 13th June 2005, so basically 13 years old, almost at this point. Well, it's gonna be on Ghost Lake and with quite plenty of players, VK Grant, VK Greggy and VK JS. I'm not entirely certain if this Grant is actually that Grant, who was also good in Age of Empires 3 and AOC as well. But not 100% positive, because if I remember correctly, VK were a French clan. So I don't expect they would be actually having a Korean between themselves. So I don't think that's actually gonna be him. Uh, but well, the gods are of course gonna be, you can see, triple Norse against us. Odin times two with Loki, and I'm gonna be playing Zeus. Yeah, well, I was heavy main of Zeus. Sometimes I played some other gigs, but not really that often. And the other civilizations, like really rarely, really very rarely. And then with us, it's gonna be Antanius as Odin and Rachti is gonna be playing Isis. Rachti was actually very competent, especially in team games. He was very good. He was very good indeed. And to basically let you know what kind of quality you can expect. This is from 2005 and the ratings are gonna be... For me, it was 1838, for Rachti 1861, for Antanius 1803. And then for the other team, for VK Grant 1826, Greg was 1904, who was even apparently playing random gold in there, so kind of funny that he got Loki. And VKJS was 1735. So overall, it seems like reasonably balanced teams, about 1800 plus reasonably. So let's see how it's actually going to be playing out and what my performance is going to be, because I really don't know. I cannot really remember, even if I wanted to. So here we are. Game is starting, and well, of course, I'm gonna be right now switching to the left into the berries. As, oh, well, not really great spawn in there, as they are all spread out, and of course, the tower is gonna be in ray as well. And of course, this means that I'm not gonna be coming for hunting dogs, I'm pretty certain this is gonna be just for husbandry. As I'm looking, of course, with the scouts somewhere around, but I'm not gonna be concentrating only on myself, should be just clicking into husbandry at this point, since I don't. Oh, actually, not wow. Okay, that's something I wouldn't expect at all. But I would be actually confident in that there's gonna be a hunt. Maybe it's because my aunt actually saw a hunt. That definitely could be. That definitely could be, because otherwise I'm fairly certain I would have to go for, of course, Bendry. But yeah, right now it really seems like that we did communicate and with Rack TV most definitely were on TeamSpeak back then. Or maybe it was Ventrilo. There were a few programs in those olden days. And he probably told me that there should be a hunt. Which is the reason why I went for hunting dogs, because otherwise I definitely would have gone for husbandry in a situation without hunt. But so far having just one piggy, not entirely great. The second one is probably gonna be hidden in there. Not even that. So I was actually having one less hunt than actually all the other players. Not entirely great. But yeah, well, I'm coming already right now for the wood and let's look for the other players. How they are doing all across the map. My teammate Antanius in the pocket still finishing, of course, with the boars in there. The same has been said already about Rachti and shown. As he's having what kind of map? Well, actually pretty decent. You can see as an Egyptian having the back gold quite close by is definitely quite a nice advantage for him. The main gold is gonna be protected by the tower, so definitely nice in that regard. As for the opponents, let's switch, for example, into Grunt in there. He's having plenty of golds already. Quite plenty indeed. It almost seems like he might already use the Great Hunt, but not entirely certain. And it seems like that he is at least having also only one ball, the same as me. So our side should be fairly equal at this point. The player in the pocket, well, <laughs> definitely having it quite far away. Right now exactly looking at the same spot as we are. Casting right now the reds. And well, one ball in there. And it seems like we basically kind of players half and half going for the hunt and some going for the berries and other sources of food. So probably it's gonna be fairly fair, fairly fair, for all the teams and for all the players as well. Plenty of gold behind the bases in there. That's really plenty of gold indeed. Let's see if it's the same for us. One gold, second gold, not really all that bad. And plenty of hunt and plenty of berries. That's definitely interesting for the Isis because he's not gonna be forced to switch into farms all that soon at this point. And also some secondary berries in there as well. And another gold mine, definitely helpful because he can kind of easily wall this up not entirely certain if this is gonna be possible. I'm thinking that maybe right next to the wall it will be. But he has still a short wall there and there, and he's gonna be fairly safe with plenty of gold mines in there. Apparently there's gonna be a rush, as Grant is coming forward with the forward temple. And on the left side it will be great, maybe doing the same. It seems like a double at this point, yeah, it will be. 
but on an ISIS? Really? That's a very strange decision, of course, as I would be expecting that they might want to go actually for my side. But, well, that's apparently not going to be the case, as Grant yeah. is just going for the hunt at this point, but he is not really going to be that aggressive, or is he? Oh well, of course he's on the left side. <laughs> yeah, the beauty of bolts and Usarks in the olden days, exactly. Well, me being annoying as ever, it seems like. Stopping one of the guys, it's also exactly very important in the early stages. Very nice, scout, very nicely scouted by Rakti, of course. As if you could be disrupting uh, the double rush of the opponents like this, this easily, then of course why not do it? Why not do it as right now Blue is gonna be significantly slowed down, as he doesn't have another Ufsak just now building it, sending it all across the map. That's gonna be costing him quite a lot of time, and this means that this rush, especially against an ISIS, is gonna be quite ineffective at this point. So where did he actually cast the Great Hunt? I just missed it. Oh, it had to be here. Yeah, it was definitely here. Because you can see this is right now transforming for one hurt into basic a double. Gonna be both Rachti and Antanius there at the same spot. As I'm kind of right now scouting a bit more to the, to the north. Trying to see if maybe the opponent is gonna be switching to my side. But apparently that's not gonna be the case. As he will want to finish with the temple as soon as possible. Which is already gonna be so, so late at this point. Then it seems like that I'm actually leading on the score, waiting for advancing to the next age. Seems like there was a bit... Oh, well, I actually couldn't have seen if I was making the villages, so it seems like this is gonna be exactly on time. Advancing about 5.40, that wasn't really all that bad. Advancing through Hermes, though. That is curious, slightly. That is slightly curious, because I might be expecting that actually this would be a good map for... for Athena Rush, but I'm thinking this is gonna be a decision based actually on the double. Discovered on the left side, which is basically right now telling me that we will want some kind of extra protection if it's gonna be needed. And ceasefire, of course, is gonna be absolutely ideal for that. So, great hand right now by the green player. It actually really seems like that on vanilla, you don't see the bolt all that easily for some reason. Because I really was looking at the minimap, but I couldn't see the bolt anywhere at all. Hmm, don't know, maybe it was on the goats. Maybe on his goats definitely could have been, but at any rate, I should be at this point already getting, of course, Hendax and also Pickaxe, so Hendax should be there. Pickaxe as well, that's of, course, that's of course something that you can do in advance at about 5, even 15 plus. Yeah, 515 is much more usual in a normal game in Titans, and just need to remind everybody, for those who haven't caught it, this is vanilla. So no auto queue, no free, no free mythic units and such, this is just gonna be good old good old vanilla gameplay as I'm coming for the bar and what else I'm gonna be doing here probably nothing all that much because right now I know that the attack is coming through the left side I'm already coming for him uh, for some kind of a military academy with two villages it's gonna be probably followed by an archer range at this point I would be expecting looking at the resources, yeah, I'm doing pretty fine on all regards in there but as I look at Trachty, he's probably gonna be advancing quite late not really that late, even though 620 for an ISIS, it's kinda okay. He's probably gonna be coming for a fast heroic, or is he gonna be just, uh, I don't know, he's gonna be full on, full on classical fighting in there from all the players. You can see Barracks being dropped, of course, Antinus is gonna be helping on the left flank as well. As I'm gonna be continuing exactly with the arch range. And then that should be already following up with another military barracks, another archer range, and from that should be reasonably fine all around. Well, I'm having one guy in the temple. What actually did I get? A uh, better villager, food and gold get rates, or rather wood and gold get rates. That's actually a very good relic to be, to be having at this point. As on the right side, I still don't have anything to worry about, it seems like. Grant really interested in the left side, with of course his teammate. With his teammate Gege already being in their full strength, and Grant, well, with this later advance, it's it's of course a bit of a problem for him with the delayed aggression, but at the same time, it's gonna be allowing him to actually be having very strong economy. Very strong economy, also as opposed to everybody else, where the undermine was actually going. Where the undermine was actually going. Didn't really see it all that much. Was he trying to take down some walls? I don't know, well, there was definitely a forest fire on the left side. Definitely a forest fire in there. Kind of useless scouting right now by Antinius, it seems like not really interested in anything all that much. As there seems to be a bit of raiding coming on from JS right in the middle of the map. It's probably gonna be quite disruptive to especially Antanius. But in the meantime, we are of course right now advancing a bit forward. Let me still hanging back a bit, so I should be definitely joining as soon as possible. And then 
Yeah, well, right now with the triple against basically a double, that should be fairly easy, even though, of course, right now, the from the backside might be a bit problematic. A bit problematic in that. Already right now, Rakti having a few issues with controlling both the army and, of course, the villages at the same time. But it should be really resulting into a fairly easy game. As me, yeah, playing smart, trying to basically house the opponent before we are going to be dealing with the long houses. Man, I was playing... I was playing quite smart at that point. <laughs> and moving around in there, as we basically need to just limit their abilities, how to produce anything. And if he can do that, then even the military buildings are not gonna be all that much of a problem. So basically, first order of business, you can see right now exactly the problems for that player. As he's losing the houses in there, he needs to be rebuilding them absolutely everywhere. And that means that he cannot produce new units. And we are having all the time in the world to actually get rid of all of that. So that seems to be situation basically resolved on the left side, even though there is still a bit of an army by ground. Quite a bit of it actually, so that might be a bit of an issue for Rakhti at this point. With still raiding going on by the green player all around, he's gonna be apparently switching is also into my base. Maybe on the gold, maybe on this one village in there, not entirely certain, but he is also kind of doubling back, so seems to be a whole lot more interested in the enemy pocket as pocket player himself. So far, Gregory doesn't, or rather Grant, doesn't seem to be switching really to my side at all. Oh well. It's a bit of a raiding in there through the Valkyrie, of course. This village is not going to be escaping because Bolt has already been used. But I'm already switching also into some kind of my defense in there with the military barracks right next to the TC. So I'm at least a bit prepared for what's going to come. Alright, so that's 2 2, of course, in Rachti's base. All the army already having medium hoplets. You should be already having medium toxoda, I'm thinking. If I can find some. Well, apparently not. Apparently not all that much, as I got another relic for better village hit points. It's definitely gonna be helpful. As uh, well, ooh, careful, <laughs> careful in there with the villagers. Actually trying to help me in there, but well, at least one is gonna be getting away. But then, of course, the Valkyrie will have to retreat, as Jason is home from collecting all the relics and is gonna be helping with the defense. It really seems like that right now, Blue is gonna be fully switching into his right side. So that's probably gonna be resulting into some kind of heroic, maybe from him, and also flown battle of me against that side of the map. But in the meantime, JS was already able to get some medium medium raiders. And that's gonna be even a bit more for my army to actually handle. And I will need to retreat back. And what's actually gonna happen on the left? Because I'm really thinking this is not a bad idea by me and Rakhti. Coming forward, nice scouting in there by one of the heresies from the blue player. And moving ahead, well. Okay, this is definitely wide open. And does actually Red Player know about all those gold mines behind his base? Halfway thinking it maybe not. Well, he actually does. He actually does. So he did have some kind of option where to go for a bit more safer gold mine. But he apparently didn't want to do that all that much. So right now he's gonna be painful that I'm thinking. As we are still following front. And what are we gonna be doing here? With this army, I'm fairly certain we can take the TC even without restoration. It shouldn't be really all that hard to actually do. They are now pushing him off the gold in there. Uh, so what is actually Purple going to be doing? Helping us quite a bit, but it's going to be taken. As apparently he has clicked all of those guys, especially the INRs in there, into one clump, which is going to be resulting into, well, about half an hour before they get <laughs> into some kind of dangerous position. Yeah, well, bit of a raiding attempt it through the back into the army. Well, since we are all spearmen and hoplets, not exactly a great idea, of course, as you can see. As in the middle, there are just a few goats, so that's not any kind of army. And on the right, we are already moving a bit forward, so that we can potentially discover what's happening in there, as our scout is already telling us that maybe an opponent could be coming there. So yeah, I'm basically just right now waiting, once the army is going to be coming for the TC, so that we can disrupt it. Well, this is definitely not good, co not good coordination of my units. Definitely not, but I'm also housed at this point. And looking at the economy, I'm gonna be getting into the heroic age at some reasonable timing. But I've also at least discovered that I might be in for quite a battle inside my base. So I should be definitely careful, as the main battle is so far going on on the left side, and it's gonna be a full on, not really triple, even though I'm having the majority of army in there, it's gonna be like two and a half against more or less one and a half. So it should be a really kind of easy fight. Unless, of course, Grant is gonna be pushing me a whole lot more, which I'm not really certain if it's gonna happen, because so far he does have some kind of build-up, and Scuddy is a bit of a problem, but still, I'm having ceasefires, so if they kinda don't play it correctly, then we should be reasonably fine. Hetimos. Okay, spread formation. <laughs> not entirely certain why. <laughs> 
maybe some kind of misclick or whatever on hotkeys, not really certain why that has happened, because it makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> In this in this scenario, it would be definitely better to be actually having them clumped so that you can a bit more easily go into the opponent. And all those INA are actually a bit of an issue. Because you can see we are having some hair series, but otherwise not entirely huge. Huge proportion of everything. But right now with Rakhti coming into the heroic cage, it's gonna be Neftis with some barracks, maybe some kind of middle a little bit later, but much more importantly, Antanius also coming for the tower. So yeah, we will have somewhere to fall back to as I am apparently gonna be having to defend in my base as well. Those villages definitely got to be too deep and they're gonna be allowing the enemy base or the enemy army right inside my base as I'm also coming all for an upgrade already. And Odysseus of course against all of those mythical units. But right now, is it exactly like the correct, correct upgrade? I don't think so. I really don't think so right now, but I'm looking at it. Definitely would have been better to have some kind of armor. I'm having absolutely no upgrade upgrades about that. As medium arches have been researched as well. And yeah, I'm definitely getting my arms handed to me. <laughs> Not really working all that well for me. But still, plenty of buildings are left. The TC is there, or the service is there as well. To get rid of at least the INAR and some mythic elements. Well, apparently, I'm gonna be producing a few centers here and there as I do have the wood. And I also do have the favor, but I don't have the population limit. As the army needs to go back from the attack in there, basically in full strength. Oh, well, look at that. Look at that new. <laughs> Idle army from me in there. As Greggy or the Grant is still pushing forward, this goal is definitely gonna be under attack pretty soon. But I'm already moving somewhere away as the military academy arch ranges are being rebuilt a bit closer to the battlefield so that I need to somehow protect my base. But looking at this, it should be reasonably fine unless we are getting something nasty. The tower is gonna be protecting us quite fine. Walking woods being cast where? Probably at the top to defend. I have absolutely no idea. Oh yeah, yeah. Here, for a bit of a defense, but unfortunately, of course, the original walking woods cannot be controlled and they are kinda stupid. Even though at this point he is definitely getting lucky in there as they are going for the correct place and they should be probably attacking towers or at least Rakhtis Migdal in there. So the battle is definitely brutal at this point as JS is fully joined with Grege and they are fighting full to with you, Antonius, rather Antonius with Rakhti against them. Seems to be they are having all kinds of troubles in their pushing through though. As on the right side I'm in a bit of fun against his opponent as I was basically trying to use the opportunity with the units basically coming back from the battlefield a bit behind the opponent to come forward for the hill fall that the opponent has built and it seems working quite fine that's gonna be coming down and with all the archers medium Texotai are so strong in the classic fight against against of course the Norse we are looking at the frost but unfortunately didn't really cost rather catch enough you can see that all the reinforcements coming from the bottom are unfrosted so I don't even need to use the ceasefire in there and I probably wouldn't want to anyway because the battle at the top is not exactly going badly for us. It's not going that great, but it's not going that bad either. As towers are gonna be the next resort, or the next thing that the enemy team is gonna be resorting to to actually defend against our team's attack. Well, that's gonna be plenty of towers really. Seems like they have actually learned, learned from our team. Where they very nicely placed monumental soldiers by the ISIS. This is gonna be absolutely immune to any kind of frost or anything. Any kind of anything like that. As I'm of course right now still pushing forward, trying to get rid of another hill for that is attempted at least to be built. And I'm getting even some extra food, which is probably to allow me to finally advance into the heroic age. Because right now the battles are not going exactly against Grant. But considering that he is in the heroic age and I'm still in the classical, it's not exactly that bad. He's having mediums on the infantry, otherwise the raiding cavalry are fine. I'm having medium hoplits and toxotai with upgrade on the attack. So that's also one of the reasons why I'm doing so good at this point. As I of course need to fall back, as I cannot be right under the fire of the hill fort. Definitely doesn't make any kind of sense. But since I have an already pretty decent amount of toxotai, I should be reasonably fine unless he gets some extra TCs for the extra population limit. It should be really working for me quite fine and the heroic age shouldn't be really that far behind from us. As JS is advancing into the heroic age and Rakhti is finally getting second TC as did Antonius a bit before. You can see the front one, that's the one that he has actually taken. Of scouting by the green player as green is right now occupying the base of his teammate quite a bit in there. Quite a bit in there as well. And this basically seems that actually Greggy with JS were able to stop our attack on the left side. You can see that Rakhti and Antonius are basically biding their time. 
And is Antinous maybe advancing? Well, he already has advanced. He's basically waiting for correct use of Frost. Rachti is not going anywhere all that much either. He's just going for a bit of Radiant right now with Chariot Archers. Basically use the interim between all the battles already having uh, the plate mail, uh, the copper mail with the copper shields in there. Definitely nice Radiant on the, on the... what is it? Gold! On the gold, as I'm apparently still pushing forward yet again, trying to basically slow the opponent down by housing him. If he potentially can, well, right now, Grunt. Grunt, 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 and I'm actually doing not a bad job at that, apparently. <laughs> can see that he has been three houses, so he's right now dropped to 85 population limit. So even, even if he wanted to replace some units, he just cannot. He absolutely cannot. He was even rebuilding some houses somewhere in spots like now exactly to basically help him defend because he's already expecting that I'm gonna be pushing through him sometime soon but I'm already right now facing Huskaros and that is a pretty bad situation so that's why I'm actually fleeing and he was able to defend quite fine especially because he's already having heavy throwing axemen and finally finally getting the pierce damage reduction which is gonna be so crucial against the armies that I'm so far having so I'm just right now waiting for Apollo interestingly enough yet again would we be expecting that since I'm fighting Full on against the Norse, I would be actually wanting to be wanting to go for Dionysus, but apparently no. I was having a different thought as maybe well, it definitely makes sense. Because if I can make some kind of underworld passage from like here or whatever into position like here, which is reasonably safe, then we could be basically easily doubling the opponents without any kind of issue whatsoever. And I'm thinking that that's something that you may be that you may be actually heading for. As every throwing axemen are upgraded by Antanius. Where the heck damage upgrade in there as well and heavy spearmen also quite nice upgrades already by Rakti. all the baseline already done as for the opponents let's check how is it looking for them as they are still spamming towers like <laughs> absolutely mad with the hill fort in there also and the upgrades already a bit of a bronze in there also from the red player as the green one is where building markets so that you can potentially advance into the imperial age or the mythical age with of course the whole copper line already being researched as well so I am on the right, I know that the opponent is trying to take the TC, am I gonna do anything about it? Oh yeah, I am. I'm already coming with the with its centaurs, and that should be enough. It should be more than enough to actually get rid of that. He doesn't seem to be sending any kind of reinforcement, so he probably hasn't noticed yet. Which is of course gonna be a pretty significant problem for him, as I should be able to disrupt that exactly, well... It was a whole lot more difficult than I actually expected. Those scars are gonna be dying. As there's yet again a bit of radium by Rakti, who is doing a definitely good job trying to repel the opponent. As the fourth TC has already been taken by Antanius, which one of those is actually the front one. The front one from the opponents. As right now we are yet again pushing forward. JS casting his frost, and that is gonna be resulting into what? Well, are we gonna be waiting with our frost a bit longer? I'm kinda thinking so, because once you are in the frost. It, well, they seem to be doing exactly what I really dislike players doing. And that's fighting against the units, at least some of those, because you're just basically dealing literally one damage. Literally one damage. That's a whole lot of wasted time and potential. You can be potentially using, for example, on killing the Migdols, killing the military buildings, like really doing anything else, but just being inefficient in that. Anyway, I'm already coming forward, and as, since I'm in Heroic Age, I'm also switching into some medium hip space to help against those who scarls. That my army is strong enough as he's already having heavy raiders. There's still only the shields in there. Am I having something better? Well, actually, I am him. I am. Some piece damage reduction as well. I'm taking a TC in the front. And am I gonna be taking the one at the back? So far, apparently not. <laughs> That's one hell of an inefficient goal getting an right there. As the ancestors are right now being cast, with of course Antinu is casting the frost also. Right now on the enemies. And well. Those siege towers, you can see how much of a problem they are actually having, finding something to kill, and even to attack, as everything is blocking the path. Well, even though they are taking quite a bit of damage from the towers in there, those, there are a whole lot more of them all across the map, so it doesn't seem like that this attack should be really succeeding just now. It's probably gonna be taking a bit more, like for example some mythical age from Rakti, I'm thinking, and the catapults, as he's still raiding, trying to find the villages here and there, and he probably is gonna be coming back in to the position on that side of the map. Alright, so we are having some Manticores and apparently switching even into Prodromai. So that we can battle a bit more efficiently against all those heavy raiders. Well, it's not exactly efficient of course. 
Mythic could be sending them into the battle to fight what they are supposed to be fighting. As he is try quite desperately trying to get the settlement up, which is at this point quite pr quite crucial for him, because I am one TC up, and since I'm also gonna be getting the heroic age units, as he's apparently switching also into Yaros to get rid of the centaurs and of some manticores and whatever. Then, well, as he's finishing with the TC, I will have to apparently fall back and rebuild a bit better army to actually deal with all of this, but I already have a fortress in the towers in there protecting the gold from a bit earlier, and that is gonna be quite an issue, because of course Petroboli will get rid of the hill fort, and he doesn't have all that many of those. Only two. Only two, and that should be a quite easily defensible position in there. I'm thinking... <laughs> Can you see the dance of the units that so they cannot get out of there? Well, come on, just get away. <laughs> Man, this sucks for him. Finally, Mel test. As here we go, Rakti already right now casting the meteors. They're gonna be coming to help me on the right side. That was a quite nice hit. And apparently, they already did break through on the left side. They were able to get on the TC just in time to actually take it out, even through all the towers in there. And this is definitely gonna help a big time. Big time, because at this point Grant is gonna be yet again housed. The population limit is not gonna be all that huge either. As uh, so of course right now, even though we did lose the Petroboli, still the army seems to be still good enough. As we are coming for another fortress, coming forward yeah. and trying to take not only the gold, but much more importantly, basically just eat into the opponent as fast as possible. He's probably gonna be trying to attack through the right. Definitely seems so, as on the left we are finally winning. And Antanius is gonna be taking a 50c and the combination of him and Rakti seems to be finally prevailing even through all the spam of the towers and the Norse players just weren't able to defend against all of this might. Yeah well quite nice bronze all around for Rakti. For Antanius it seems like not really that different even though he's missing basically the shields for reduction of the PS damage in there but otherwise quite nice. And the camels are normal and chariot archers probably not upgraded either. Yeah. They aren't so far as even some Anubites are gonna be made by Rakti. <laughs> and Therm Frost Giants are gonna be joining also in the game. Okay, so for JS, he's having the baseline of upgrades, nothing more than that. As the red player is rebuilding somewhere to the back, you can see even more towers, like plenty more towers still coming forward. But unfortunately, he just really cannot produce enough army, it seems like. And though he's having bronze, bronze copper at least in there. And that means that basically this double from the left side of us, 5 plus 3 TC should be just a bit too much for them to handle. As we are on the right flank doing battle against the very nicely upgraded Grant. As far as actually units go, he's having good composition as I'm still stuck at mediums. What's actually the reason for that sucky economy? Quite probably. You can see them actually housed. Actually at this point housed or rather popped. Not really housed, popped. But uh, am I coming for some kind of interesting upgrades? So Antanius is finally there with the Balder into the Ragnarok. There have been plenty of <laughs> fortresses absolutely everywhere to help me defend, it seems like. So you're not know, translate in the back TC, which kind of makes sense. Because at this point I cannot really I cannot really sustain it and I would be a whole lot more interested in, for example, getting some upgrades rather than anything else. Okay, so Odysseus is in the below, middle of the battle. He's gonna be like getting a few extra fire in there from the units that they can be then killed for example by the hippo space but here we are with all the wolfies trying to kill my buildings yeah well not really all that bad but apparently Rakhtis Pharaoh is gonna die <laughs> trying to empower all the economy in there and wolfies really yeah absolutely everywhere trying to slow the economy down but nothing all that major as well they didn't spawn right next to me so I still have plenty of echo if it wasn't for the slaughter on the left side, which is not great. I did lose two villages in there. I did lose two villages in there, but otherwise we seem to be moving quite well against the opponent, who still does have quite nice foothold on the right side. But I don't exactly think it's gonna be all that much of a problem, because he doesn't have a push strong enough against all those fortresses and towers that I'm still spamming all across the battlefield. On the left side though, the battle seems to be more or less, well, <laughs> not really done. I was going to call it done, but look at the, all those towers from the red. Red is Greggy. Yeah, right now he's right now resigning at least. But I wanted to do nine towers. They actually having nine towers with the tenth one being built. But yeah, it doesn't seem like that on the left side, JS and Greggy would be having really any kind of game anymore. As on right, I'm still having a bit of fight with Grant, but not anymore. As of course fighting one, even against one, wasn't just going all that well for him. It was just probably a question of time before he just wouldn't be able to sustain the production and 
it would just be probably also fairly quickly over once they steamrolled our allies from the left side into the right. Well, interesting game. Starting with <laughs> very interesting decision to double an ISIS. That's not a great idea. That's really not a great idea. And that, of course, not counting with the ball, that's a problem always. <laughs> and something that definitely helped us quite significantly. Like he could be bolting at least one of the Ulf's arcs. Which realistically slowed the opponent down by about at least a minute. Maybe even more than that. That was a really huge issue for the opponent. So let's check into the post game. Where Antanius is gonna be having the highest score. Because he was just getting all the upgrade, or rather, all the TCs. And that means that his economy was really doing quite well. Like really well indeed. You can see 7,000 by about 1,300 more than the second best. Well, economy, not really hugely good for me, it seems. Kind of similar to Grant. So we were kind of on the equal footing in that. On the equal footing with Greggy having most, most units killed. Well, even through the military count of 123, because of course he was having so many towers in there. <laughs> so many towers that definitely helped him get in rid of the enemy army. Quite a bit. Not that much of an efficiency by me, you can see 174 against just 130 killed. Not really good. Not really good at all. But otherwise, Grant exactly 618 advance, while he should have been advancing close to Gregi, about 515. And if that did happen, that would have been a whole lot better game. And yeah, well, me lagging behind, you could have seen I was having problems with the economy, which of course resulted into not enough upgrades in there. I was at least having the most relics captured. <laughs> Not that it helped me a whole lot. <laughs> Not that it helped me a whole lot. Those took so though. They definitely helped in the classical fight in there. They definitely did. I was actually not booming that bad. Right on par with the ISIS in there. But then it kind of wasn't going that well. That's probably when he actually switched into attacking me, the blue player. Yeah, I'm really thinking so, because that's when I started losing villagers. Yeah, that's gonna be it. It's gonna be the time when he started attacking me. So, of course, it's kind of easy to build economy when you are not under attack. But military units, I was actually having quite good numbers all around. Just the efficiency really wasn't there. The efficiency just wasn't really all that much there. So, yeah, guess GG.